Hello, everybody. My name is John Mark Johnson, Jr. I'm the host of Reform GGA, and as you can see, I have a new toy. I have not been able to shoot this thing yet, but I thought I'd go ahead and share my initial impressions of it with you guys. This happens to be a Palmetto State Armory AK-103. As has been said already on the web and various other places, even though it is called an AK-103, it really isn't. This is just an AKM with a few upgrades to the front end and a few other superficial changes here and there to make it resemble an AK-103, but at its core, it is in fact a regular AKM. So as long as you know that going into it, and you know that its resemblance to the AK-103 is basically only superficial, uh, you can begin to appreciate it for what it is. And what it is, is basically a slightly modified and upgraded AKM. So let's look at it from that perspective. What are the significant upgrades? Well, while superficially it helps it look like an AK-103, the plastic furniture that it comes with is not really an upgrade. And personally, I really do not like this furniture. I'm sure that it's very functional. Like I said, I haven't had the chance to shoot it yet, but um, giving it the benefit of the doubt. But the fact of the matter is I do not like the furniture that it is on here. For one, the fore end grip is just way too small and doesn't very uh, provide very much protection in terms of where I place my hand. Uh, changing the orientation so you guys can see it a little bit better. If I use a low grip on the gun, I have a tendency to put my thumb pretty far forward and it will catch on the middle of the front end. And once I've been shooting for a while, and it doesn't take much with an AK, that little metal ring up on the front of the foregrip will get pretty hot, and so you burn your thumb that way. If I choke back on it, well, I can get the back part of, well, this would be the front part of the receiver, I should say, and that usually doesn't heat up quite as fast, but eventually, you know, say three mags down the, the road or something like that, that will heat up as well. And then, if I choke too far forward, the meat of my palm will hit that metal ring as well. So pretty much no matter where I hold this thing for a low hold, I'm either burning my thumb, I'm burning my palm, or uh, the meat of my palm, or I'm, I'm going to burn myself on uh, the trunnion. These grips are just a little too small. Now, what would be preferable uh, and is okay in terms of keeping it away from the burning metal bits is to wrap your thumb over with the front end of the gun. The problem, though, when I do that is that I cannot use the sights anymore if my thumb is on top of the gun. So, great, I'm not burning myself, but I can't use the open sights doing that. So, these grips, while they look the part of an AK-103, they are absolutely awful in terms of functionality. Like I said, if I use a low grip and I'm too far forward, I'm going to burn my thumb. If I come back too much, I'm either going to burn myself on this upper uh, metal ring or I'm going to burn myself on uh, the front of the receiver after it warms up. So it's just not really an ideal grip. Those of you guys who know me know that what I prefer is something like the MOE uh, foregrip. As you can see, the MOE foregrip is built up a little bit more on both the front and the back to help keep you off of the Bernie bits. And then on this particular gun, this is my Palmetto State Armory GF3, um, which is a little bit older product line uh, for them. It does not have a chrome line barrel and those kinds of things. We'll talk about those differences in a second. But you'll also notice that I put an optic on this one so that I can put my thumb over uh, the foregrip and that way it keeps uh, my forehand away from all of the burning bits on the gun. Um, so addition of an optic plus a foregrip that has a little bit more of a buildup around those metal parts helps considerably. This one, it's pretty smooth. It transitions right into the metal and um, I, I do not like those kinds of grips. Like I said, I haven't shot this particular gun, but anytime I've used a grip like this, I always wind up burning myself and it's not a pleasant experience. Um, so yeah, those are going to wind up having to go. And like I said, they're, they're basically there to completely look. They don't really do anything for the gun. And if they ever move this product line to not being AK-103 imita imitation, but just admitting what it is, it's a upgraded AKM, and they start putting different foregrips on there, that would be really preferable. And then the stock on the back, 
Um, very lightweight, I do like that about it, but it is extremely uncomfortable. It has a metal plate here on the end, and it has these ribs on there that are meant to give a little bit of traction. They really don't because this metal is extremely slick, and those ribs are not nearly well-defined enough, not nearly deep enough or sharp enough to actually provide any kind of real grip. Uh, but this thing is incredibly slick, and the angles that it has are also fairly well-defined, fairly sharp angles, and so it's not really comfortable. It tends to kind of grab you and kind of dig in uncomfortably uh, deep. I prefer a buttstock that is uh, uh, wider and longer than uh, this one is in terms of the, the uh, butt pad itself. Now you could probably get like a shotgun type butt pad that you could put on the end of this that would uh, soften that up a little bit and make it a little bit more manageable. And that would probably be a relatively cheap fix for most people uh, that would be entirely uh, functional. But I am probably going to trade it out for a Zukov uh, Magpul stock uh, just because those ones can fold and uh, they're also adjustable for length of pull. I've explained in previous videos that when I go out shooting, it's not uncommon at all for me to have other people out there and having a gun that's adjustable for other people is a good thing. So I'll probably switch this out for a Zukov stock. Uh, like I said, though, it is very light. It is very functional. It's not really comfortable in the shoulder. A relatively cheap uh, butt pad would probably take care of that just fine, though. Uh, but I will give it kudos for being very lightweight. That part is good. Uh, the grip is the uh, the paintbrush style grip. It's very, very, very thin, which makes it uncomfortable. Uh, for me, I will probably be trading that out for one of the Magpul MOE grips just because it's a little bit more hand filling and I can feel like I can manipulate it better. Um, this one is still very functional. I don't think it's bad in that regard. And there is a decent amount of texture on the side. Uh, don't mind that. That's that's okay. Uh, the grip, the biggest thing about it that gets me is just that it's small. In terms of texture, it's not bad. In terms of length, it's not bad. It's just small circumference, and I just really don't feel like it fills the hand well enough to really be comfortable. So, minus points on uh, that, but still, it's a it's a functional grip. And like I said, the buttstock is functional. The end of it is very uncomfortable in the shoulder, but like I said, a cheap uh, cheap butt pad would take care of that just fine. Oh, and some of you will want to know, it does have a little trap door in the back for the cleaning kit. So you can put a cleaning kit in there if you want. All right, so in terms of furniture, the furniture, like I said, there's nothing special about it. It's pretty low end furniture. Um, it's not awful, but there are definitely better furniture options out there. The main reason why this gun has these furniture options that, that you see here is just so that it looks like an AK-103. Uh, this particular stock right here is not the folding stock option. They do, of course, make uh, this with a folding stop, a stock option. And some people think that that makes it more authentic as an AK-103. I'm going to disagree with that because the AK-103 line was actually made in several different configurations basically to suit the taste of buyers and some of the buyers simply didn't have um, a request for a folding stock they said we don't really ever plan on folding it and it's cheaper to do it without so there are actually true AK-103s this is not a true AK-103 but there are true AK-103s out there that do not have any kind of a folding stock they have a stock that is basically like this one so in terms of being true to AK-103 these are actually just fine that way. All right, so the furniture, like I said, it resembles AK-103 furniture. It's not particularly special. There are better options out there. I plan on upgrading this uh, basically when I can. Uh, moving on to the main functional uh, bits. Uh, let's talk about the safety first. The safety, as you can see, is an enhanced safety. It has a little extension down towards uh, the handle of the gun, the pistol grip of the gun, so that you can operate it with your index finger. Now, when I first got this, this safety was very, very stiff, so I had to bend it out a little bit, and that's fairly easy. Uh, once you get it disassembled, and I'll show you this, you basically raise it a little bit and push it out a little bit. Don't get crazy with it, but slowly, gently push it out and adjust the tension to where you want it to be so that you can easily manipulate it with your index finger and it will work just fine. And this one and does do that. I personally think that the shelf that they provided there is maybe just a little small, uh, but it's still very functional. I, I don't feel like it's, you know, a, a non-functional piece of kit at all. I would just prefer 
something that sticks out a little bit further than that, but this isn't bad. Uh, and given that I do plan on putting a Zukov stock on this at some point, uh, the small ledge actually isn't entirely bad because the Zukov stock actually folds over onto the right side of the gun. So that might not be an entirely bad thing. Um, another upgrade that I would like to see if we're talking about an upgraded AKM is to put a locking notch on the safety. Uh, those have been out for quite a long time and if you're going to make an upgraded safety that would seem like an easy thing to do. The idea of a locking notch is it's a little hole that gets cut out in the safety that you can take the charging handle and put it in that notch and it will hold the bolt open. Um, that's the idea behind those. This gun obviously does not come with one because there is no notch there. Uh, but if we're going to make look at this thing as an upgraded AKM, which is what it is, that would be a good upgrade. I do like the extended uh, shelf. That is a good upgrade from a regular AK safety because regular AK safeties do not have this little ledge and you actually have to come forward to manipulate the safety, which is kind of annoying. This little ledge allows you to do it with your hand still on the pistol grip, so that is good. But if you're going to bother to do this, it doesn't seem like it'd be that much harder to do a little cutout and make it so that you can lock the bolt open. Uh, but that is just me. Uh, next, in terms of... I'm not sure that I would necessarily call it an upgrade, but in terms of being different from the normal product line, the... Uh, dust cover that they put on these things is a smooth top cover. Now this is not an AK-103 top cover. Uh, very easy to tell because around the ejection port here there's supposed to be basically a little bit of edge work and this does not have it. So while AK-103s do have a smooth um, top cover uh, they're also supposed to have a little bit of a recess in the ejection port edge, which this one does not. So, again, it's not a 103. And to let you know what I'm talking about here with it being ribbed or not, this is an example of the regular one, and you can see uh, the, uh, the two ribs here. One in the back, one in the front, and then there's one way, 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 way up at the front. So it's got three ribs along the way and also some ribbing along the top as well. So that would be a normal AKM uh, dust cover for Palmetto State Armory. This one they made specifically for this gun modification to make it look more like a, a 103, but it is still just an AKM top cover. They just made it smooth instead of having the ribs. Okay, now let's go ahead and take that off, plunge in, and this one is definitely a little tight, it's brand new, so of course it's going to be a little tight, and all of my Metal State Armory guns, uh, all of my AKs from them, have had very, very tight fitting uh, top covers. Uh, some people really like that, personally I find it a little bit annoying because this piece is not overly vital to function. It's basically there to keep you from getting your hands caught in the action of the gun and as the name would apply to prevent a certain amount of ingress, ingress of dust and debris. Um, but in terms of the vital function of the operation of the gun, that doesn't really do anything. So having it super tight fitting doesn't really enhance much, but it is what it is. Now, as far as the internals, they are just regular AKM internals for Palmetto State Armory. It's basically their normal uh, trigger, uh, trigger group that they have in there, and the uh, bolt carrier and bolt are fairly normal for them. I did mention that I would tell you guys how to fix any problems with the safeties. Once you get the, the top cover off, you can lift the safety up a bit. You don't want to lift it too far, because then when you start pushing on it, it'll come out. So you don't want to go quite that far. But lift it up a little bit, and then if you want it to be less stiff, you basically take it and you push out on it, pushing towards you, the viewer. If you want it to be tighter, you're going to go ahead and pull towards yourself, slowly and gently, and then basically play around with it and see, okay, is this easy enough to move on and off for me or not? Um, I want it to be easy enough to easily move with my index finger, but I also want it to be tight enough that if I violently shake it, because you're going to be firing this thing and it's going to violently shake, it shouldn't move around. And I should be able to uh, grip the forend and loosely play with it and not come up easily. Okay, so, 
it should be easy enough to manipulate, but it also shouldn't move too terribly easily. It, it shouldn't come out of its detents under normal recoil is what you're trying to avoid. All right, let's go ahead and pull out the recoil spring. Comes out like a normal AKM does, and that wouldn't be different for the 103. The 103 uses basically the same system. Oh, well, there is one thing that I did want to mention though, and I will need the recoil spring in for this. And that is that this Palmetto State Armory has the exact same problem that all of my Palmetto State Armory AKs and 762x39 have had. And that is that the uh, bolts and bolt carrier can get caught over the trigger group. Now, this is not something that's entirely unique to Palmetto State Armory. And with AKs and AKMs in general, it's not a huge deal. A lot of them you can lock back like this. However, my experience with the Palmetto State Armory guns is if they do lock back uh, like this uh, when they're not supposed to, uh, this is just being held in uh, place by the tension of the, uh, uh, the hammer pushing against the bolt carrier. Uh, with Palmetto State Armory AKs, my experience has been that this extra tension will actually slow the bolt carrier down uh, during the actual firing sequence to the point that you will not get full ejection, which will result in a lot of stovepipe malfunctions. Uh, that was actually the original problem that I had with my first AK and 762x39 from Palmetto State Armory. And that gun, while it's functioning very well now, originally in order to get it to function correctly without malfunctioning, without stovepiping, I had to file down the hammer and the underside of the bolt carrier quite a bit in order to get those pieces to move properly. And uh, my experience with uh, these guns, with the Palmetto State Armory guns, is that if you can pull it back and it lock in place, that's okay. As long as when you go to lower the gun down to a horizontal position, it naturally comes forward. You'll notice that this one did not. It's still back. What should happen is when you lower it down to the horizontal, it should come slamming home on its own. I shouldn't have to uh, tap it forward. So this one has too much tension, which means that I'm probably going to have to file the underside of the bolt carrier and the hammer on this one in order to get it to function correctly. There are some people out there that are under the mistaken impression that if you do that, you'll be adding years and years of extra wear to your gun. And that is not true. If you file them correctly, which would be filing on both surfaces that are interacting, not just one. A lot of people will say, well, you only need to file on the, the back of the hammer. You don't need to file on the bolt carrier as well. And in order to get it to function, that is technically true. But in terms of avoiding future wear and tear, you want to actually file on both surfaces so that you maintain the geometry. If you change the geometry too much, then you can actually wind up adding extra wear and tear. But as long as you're taking off material more or less proportionally, that usually isn't a big issue. And as long as the pieces are made of the correct material and treated properly, any kind of adding additional years and years and years worth of wear and tear, that kind of claim is totally bunk. It's not true. If you do the work correctly and the pieces were made correctly to begin with, what will happen is there'll be a little uh, period there where the parts will kind of start to made up a little bit. Uh, will they'll smooth each other out and wear on each other a little bit, but then it will settle down and it will basically be normal going, normal wear and tear from there. As long as you do things proportionally, and as long as the pieces were made out of the correct material and treated properly from the factory. And my experience with the Paul Meadow State Armory AKs is that that is indeed the case. They are made out of the right material. They are treated properly. Their sizing though is what is off. The bolt carrier rides way too close to the trigger assembly. Uh, there should be a little bit more of a gap there and there is not, so you have to create a little bit more of a gap by removing material from either side. And like I said, as long as you do it from either side, both sides, um, it shouldn't add anything significant to it. And I have done this, like I said, with all my Palmetto State Armory guns. Uh, just one as an example that I've literally just showed you, uh, but by Palmetto State Armory uh, AK-47 GF3, this one right here, 
uh, was the very first gun that I discovered that I had to do that on. And it is still running strong today, just as strong as it was once I first fixed the problem. And now I'm about 2,500 rounds into this thing. It is running just as well as it ever was. And yes, you can very clearly see the place uh, on the uh, bolt and broke, uh, sorry, on the bolt carrier and the back of the hammer where I file, uh, filed it. But that filing has not significantly changed from when I did the filing, that those marks have not significantly changed. Uh, there was a little bit of a, a period where the kind of were, the pieces were kind of meshing with each other, mating with each other, polishing each other. But now it's not an issue at all. Totally functional, no significant additional wear. As long as you do it properly, it will be just fine. And the reason why you want to be, like I said, why you would be consider, concerned about these things locking back is because AKs are not supposed to lock back on their own. That's the first problem. And if you have something that locks back when it's not really designed to, that can become a safety issue because there's lots of people that aren't used to AKs that pick one up and start messing with it and think that it's locked back, stick their fingers in there and bad things happen. So it's definitely not good for people that are new to AKs. They become, become a safety hazard because that's not how AKs are designed to operate. But like I said, if there is enough engagement, if the pieces are in fact too close and there's too much pressure, it will actually slow the bolt down to the point that you will not get proper ejection. And if you don't get proper ejection, you will have malfunctions. Um, Particularly stove piping has been my experience with the Palmetto State Armory guns. Sometimes that will also manifest in terms of feeding problems, uh, just because that bolt velocity is not as high as it should be, so sometimes it doesn't push the next round into place like it should. Uh, but especially stove piping issues has been a very consistent theme with these guns. So this is something that will need to be fixed before I go out shooting it, because I do not want to go out and shoot a gun that stove pipes every other round, or even every other magazine. That is not an enjoyable experience at all, so yes, that will definitely need to be fixed. All right, getting back into the disassembly, we'll take out the recoil spring, take out the bolts and bolt carrier, and we'll talk about these just a little bit. I'm trying to find a natural resting point for that is a little bit hard with the, the stock that's on it. It doesn't really lean up against things very well because the stock makes it heavy towards the top end and so it kind of wants to fall over to that side so I have to be fairly picky about how I position it. All right but looking at the bolt and bolt carrier the first giveaway that this is not a true AKM bolt and bolt carrier is that this bolt as you can see has gas rings on it. In fact it has three of them. A true AK-103 does not have any rings on its um, uh, piston at all. The piston should not have any gas rings. When the AK-103 was made, it was made to be something that could be a part of an entire product line. That was the whole idea with the 100 series um, uh, rifles, is that you would have one production facility that could produce a bunch of different kinds of guns and different calibers with different barrel lengths, etc., etc., for a wide variety of customers. So there are a lot of base parts that would be very interchangeable, and also unnecessary things would be cut out of the production to make it that much more cheaper and efficient. And one of the things that got cut were the gas rings, because functionally you don't really need them. And so on a true AK-100 rifle, the piston will not have gas rings. So that is incorrect, very obviously correct, incorrect. And then the bolt carrier as a whole should actually be more like an AK-74 bolt carrier instead of an AK-47 bolt carrier. This is very obviously a, a 47 type. And the reason for that, again, is that they wanted to be able to produce a lot of different guns all in the same factory. And at the time, their kind of hot rod rifle, if you will, was the AK-74M, the modernized version of the AK-74 that fires the 545 by 39 cartridge, whereas this fires 762 by 39. And so the base gun that they were working with fired a smaller, lighter caliber than uh, the 762 by 39 and guns did. And so their bolts and bolt carrier was a little bit different and they just simply modified it a little bit to fit the 762 by 39 gun. One of the giveaways, especially on the bolt, we'll go ahead and take that out of the carrier here. 
one of the real uh, obvious giveaways on the bolts is that the extractor on a true AK-100 series rifle is exposed. As you can see though, this extractor fits inside of the bolt proper. It's not exposed, it's not on the outside. So this is very much so just a standard uh, AK-47 AKM bolts. It's not one of the 74 types, it's not one of the 100 types, this is just a standard um, uh, AKM. That's, that's all that this is, nothing overly special there. Uh, the firing pin does appear to be uh, free-floating, the retaining pins seem to be just fine. Tension on the extractor seems to be fine. I am a little bit concerned about this finish here. I, it's not coming across on camera very well, but it's actually a dark finish. And my experience with these dark finishes from Palmetto Strike Armory is that they usually wear off very quickly and your bolts will go to the whites, be in the white as they say pretty quickly. Um, functionally, it doesn't really do anything. Uh, just make sure that you keep it oiled and uh, that'll prevent any rust or any uh, problems like that. Uh, but to me, it's just one of those unnecessary things that Again, makes the gun look kind of nice and cool. You know, it's the sleek black rifle and all that, but my experience is that a lot of times these finishes from Palmetto State Armory, especially on parts like this that get a lot of movements and a lot of force, they don't always last all that well. So we'll see what happens with this one. Maybe they've improved their finish and it's those issues are a thing of the past. Maybe. Kind of doubt it. I was fairly impressed with the, the cam channel on this one. On my GF3, my cam channel was uh, very, very, very much so jagged and just all kinds of weird. Uh, this one's actually not bad, though. This one is not bad at all. Yeah, let's see. Okay, that should take care of that. Just trying to make sure that we don't get interrupted again. All right. Um, but yeah, that's a fairly nice, smooth channel. And so once I get... Um, this thing properly sized so that it's not locking back when it's not supposed to and potentially causing problems with stove piping and failures to feed and things like that it should be good to go all right um actually i don't want to do that yet let's go ahead and talk about the gas tube now some people really like the gas tube lever to be super tight and you have to get use the uh, the bolt to get it open because the bolt has a little, uh, not bolt, sorry, the bolt carrier has a little lip on it that some people use to pry up the lever for the gas tube. Um, I personally don't like that and I haven't found it to be a, a big issue. If it's a little loose, as long as it stays in place under recoil, that's just fine. If you can get it out by finger tension, as long as it doesn't come loose under recoil, as far as I'm concerned, that's good. Um, some people who want greater tension will take them and bend them. The problem though is that these levers are usually not made like the safety levers are. The safety levers are basically spring steel, so you can bend them a little bit as long as you're fairly gentle about it and they will um, and they'll be strong enough to take it. These little levers though are usually not spring steel, so if you bend them too much, they will just flat out snap and then you have a broken lever that won't be operational. So uh, while some people are very picky about the tension of these levers, I would say on the, fr on the front level, front lever, as long as it's actually functional, that is it stays in its detent under recoil, uh, as long as it'll stay there when the gun is shooting, I would leave it alone. Okay. If you can get it up by hand, great. If you can't, there is always that little channel that is on the bolt carrier. Okay. The little channel there. Fit it over the lip and then just twist it around and that will bring it up uh, so that you can manipulate it. So if it does happen to be too tight, no big deal. Just use the bolt carrier. If it's loose enough to work by hand, that's great, just as long as it stays in place under recoil. All right, so lift that up. And let's see if we can get the gas tube to come out. There we go. This gas tube is not overly tight, which I do prefer. Some people want really tight gas tubes. Um, I've personally found no advantage to that. As long as it stays in place on the gun and does the job of guiding the piston into the gas block like it's supposed to, it usually doesn't need to be super tight. Um, and this gun is fairly new, so there's not going to be 
a whole lot in the way of any marks or anything like that internal and of course I'm not noticing anything major that would stick out that way um, it's a brand new gun so there shouldn't be any marks from the piston inside the uh, the gas tube but fairly loose easy fit so that's not bad um, now one thing that I will I mentioned that I do think is a problem is uh, the interplay between the muzzle device and the cleaning rod. They put on the muzzle device so that it would look like an AK-103 and all the reports that I've seen on this particular muzzle device are actually very positive. Even though it's not a true AK-103, Palmetto State Armory seems to have done a decent job based on, like I said, the other reports that I've seen. I haven't shot this gun yet. I don't know for myself yet. But based on everything that I've seen, this brake seems to do exactly what it's supposed to do. It does function well as a brake. My problem though, is that it really kind of prevents the normal interaction with the cleaning rod and that I can't get the cleaning rod out with the brake on there. So in order to get the cleaning rod out, I'm gonna to have to take off the brake. There's a little detent that you push. Come on. And then it should screw off in the normal way. Yeah, come on. There we go. And yes, I'm putting a few scratches on the front end, which is normal for AKs. If you plan on using the gun, you're going to get scratches on it, and that's just the way it goes. So, let's see here. By the way, I'm not pointing the gun at you. You are not in my apartments. You can see a little bit of a scratch that I put on there trying to get that detent down. Uh, but that happens. Okay, not a big deal. Um, but I have to take that off, and even then... You can see that the cleaning rod still kind of runs into the thread, so I'm going to have to kind of pull it out, and then eventually I can get the, the rod out. But like I said, I have to take off the, the brake first, and that makes getting to the rod very annoying. And then to put the rod back in, it actually doesn't always go in like it's supposed to. Yeah, it locks up on the other end. Let's see here. No. Nope. And I've taken it, uh, the handguard apart to try to see what is going on in there, and I can't tell exactly what it is, but it doesn't want to go into place. Basically, no matter how I move it around. Yeah, there's a reason why Palmetto State Armory for the longest time didn't put cleaning rods on their guns. And that's because they don't seem to accept cleaning rods very well, unless you want to spend a lot of time fighting with the silly thing to get it in there. Uh, so my recommendation is if you're going for the look of an AK-103, probably best to just leave the cleaning rod alone. If you're going for an updated AKM, which is how I'm looking at it, I'm just going to run it without the cleaning rod because this one does not fit particularly well in this gun. Now. Other AKs usually don't have a big problem with that, but this one for some reason does seem to have an issue. And it might be this individual gun, I don't know, because all the other guns that I've gotten from Palmetto State Armory didn't have cleaning rods in them. So I don't know if that's a general problem or if it's specific to this one particular gun. But I'm going to run it without the cleaning rod because I am much more interested in this as an updated AKM and hopefully a fairly accurate one. We'll talk about that in a, a, a second. And when you want a more accurate gun, having some loose bit of metal hanging underneath the barrel usually doesn't help a whole lot. A lot of people that shoot these kinds of guns that can, can have cleaning rods in them for accuracy, when it comes time to actually shoot for accuracy, they usually take the cleaning rod out anyways. So I'm just gonna go ahead and follow suit with that and I've got used to running AKs without cleaning rods. It's not something that I rely on as a part of kits and whatnot, so I'm, I'm okay with it not being there. Other people, the purists out there, the people that really want it to look right, they'll, they'll love the cleaning rod, but uh, given that it's hard to get in and out without fiddling around with it quite a bit, I just don't consider it to be worthwhile. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
There we go. All right, so that is back in. We'll go ahead and put the gas tube back in. Make sure that the lever is up high enough to make sure that this can slide in properly. Slides in nice and easy. Goes back into tension quite well. That's good. All right, let's get the bolts and bolt carrier back together. Love these, pretty simple. Drop the bolts in, just uh, drop it into the hole, and then rotate it down so that the, the lug, let's see, there's the lug, slides into place, slide it forward, good to go. Yep, definitely a little extra tension there. All right, put the recoil spring back in place. All right, and the smooth dust cover. And with Palmetto State Armory guns, for whatever reason, the dust cover is usually abnormally tight. There we go. So it's a little hard to get in there, but fiddle with it enough. You can get it in there. All right, and let's talk about uh, the rear sight leaf. It is an 800 meter sight leaf. Um, basically the exact same one that they've been using on their GF3. I know that Palmetto State Armory is up to a GF5, but I don't think that they significantly changed uh, the rear sight leaf. So I don't think that's any difference at all. The front uh, sight uh, block is a little bit different from their normal one. Let me see if I can bring their normal one up here. Okay, so here's the normal one on my right. Their AK-103 is on the left, and you'll notice that they're kind of sort of similar, but not quite. A little bit of difference, especially underneath. Uh, you'll notice definitely a difference with the, uh, the cleaning uh, rod spot. On the regular one, goes uh, much further forward. On the AK-103, uh, that cleaning rod guide um, place is very, very, very different. I'll just say it like that. Uh, that's a quick, easy way to tell. And then there's also a small hole on this one. Let me see if I can point to it. So there's a yeah, the big hole here, and then there's a smaller hole behind that on their 103 version. It's not really true to a AK-103 front sight, but it's similar enough that it at least gets the look. Here there is there is no hole behind the, the main big hole. So it is definitely a different sight. They did try to make that difference, go for the looks, etc., etc. They They did put an effort into it. I will give them credit for that. But it doesn't change the fact that it's still not a 103. And then looking at it externally, you will notice that it has dome rivets. And again, that's typical of an AKM. It's not typical of an AK100 series though. So this is uh, basically the wrong kind of receiver. It's a very obviously an AKM receiver with typical AKM rivets. Uh, that being said, the rivets do look uh, very nice flush. Um, they look like they're in good shape. They look like they're good rivets. So in that term, in that regard, no, no major problems there. So good quality that way. You will notice that there is an optics rail on the opposite side, um, which gives me conflicted feelings about the typical folding stocks that these things come with because the folding stock flips over on this side that has the rail. And which means that you either have to take off the optic in order to get the stock to fold, or it doesn't really fold completely and it does this weird thing. Usually you basically have to take off the optic. So, yeah, I get why they did it. I get why they, they did it uh, that way, but I just don't like it. Uh, like I said, I much prefer, uh, prefer the Zukov stock that folds the other way so that you can still keep your optic mounted to the gun and all that kind of thing, but that is what it is. All right, uh, let's also talk while we got, while we're down on this end, let's go ahead and talk about the trigger. It is the standard uh, Palmetto State Armory trigger, basically. Uh, fairly much uh, a stock trigger. 
little bit of take up and grit. Uh, pretty smooth let off though. There's a little bit of a wall, but not much. Uh, my experience with these triggers is that they do smooth out with a little bit of time. They'll still be long, uh, but the grittiness will smooth out in a few hundred rounds. That's, that's not bad. Right now, it feels like it's about three and a half pounds, which is pretty similar to my GF3. Once I first got it, it was also about three and a half pounds. And if it breaks in like the GF3 trigger did, and it looks like they're basically the same, um, that one now pulls at about three pounds. And so this one, once it breaks in, I think it'll also pull at about three pounds. It's not a bad trigger, it's just long, like a typical AK trigger is. AK triggers are long, uh, but once they smooth out though, they're, they're great. Um, you will sometimes feel, uh, uh, find people complaining about trigger slap with the Palmetto State Armory triggers and AK triggers in general. And that is a little bit of an issue that I found, but personally I've gotten used to it and I actually kind of like it, especially when firing fast, because that trigger slap kind of pushes your finger past the, the reset automatically so you don't have to worry about whether or not you got to the reset. Um, I look at it as, as a feature. I like it so that I know when the, when the triggers reset. Other people find it really annoying because they want to be in control of exactly where that trigger is at all times. I personally don't think it is a, it's as big of an issue as some people think it is, but um, the these triggers usually can be taken out and replaced with something else fairly easily. I would not recommend the binary triggers that are out there. I've not had good experience trying to put those into the Palmetto State Armory guns without significant modification. But like ALG triggers and those kinds of aftermarket triggers, usually with relatively minor uh, fitting and adjustments if the, if the tolerances are too tight like on this gun, might have to do some file work. But other than that, it doesn't take a whole lot to get a lot of those aftermarket triggers in there. And if you want something that doesn't have at least as much of a trigger slap problem and you want something that has a shorter take up, uh, something like the ALG trigger would be a good upgrade that way. All right, so, yeah, like I said, right now there's a little bit of grits. It's breaking at about three and a half pounds. A uh, little bit of a defined wall, but my experience with these triggers is that with some use, they'll break in, they'll smooth out pretty well, and it'll basically be just a long three pound pull. Um, they're not bad that way at all. All right, one thing that I did notice that is worth mentioning is that there is a lot of play in the bolt carrier. You can push it in and pull it out, and there's quite a bit of play on it. It's not uncommon for AKMs to have a little bit of back and forth play, but this one's more than I've had on any other AKM. Will that affect performance? Most likely not. AKs can deal with a very wide range of tolerances and be just fine, so it's probably not gonna affect anything, but that would tell me that the uh, Quality control is just not there for Palmetto State Armory. I think this year has really done them in that in that regard. They're still producing guns. I'll give them credit for that, and that's why I have this. Uh, but their their QC has definitely gone down, and there are some problems that they've had at the beginning that they still have. Like I said, with it walking back uh, when it shouldn't. Like I said, I should be able to lower the gun to the horizontal position and it come forward on its own but it doesn't. In order to get it to come forward, I actually have to tap it forward. What that tells me is that if I leave the gun as is and shoot it, I'm most likely going to get some kind of malfunction. Either a stove pipe malfunction, that's more common, possibly a feeding malfunction, maybe both at the same time. Uh, but yeah, it shouldn't do that. So that's gonna require some work. And that is a problem from the beginning uh, of when I started buying these things. I started buying these things a kind of early, mid 2020. We're now going into 2021. It has easily been at least, uh, probably at least seven or eight months from when I got the GF3 and that problem still persists. And now it is considerably looser in there than it used to be. So it's just that more of an issue. All right, going up from there, we have the main parts that I would consider to be uh, the real upgrades of getting this gun. Like I said, it's, it's nothing but an AKM with some furniture and some added features that make it look more like an AK-103, but it's very much so not a, a 103. It has the wrong dust cover, it has the wrong receiver, it has the wrong kind of uh, rivets. Um, it has the wrong bolt and bolt carrier, et cetera, et cetera. It is very much so not a 103, but it does have some superficial similarities. But in terms of performance, 
where you get the real performance similarities are going to be on the front end of the gun. And there are three main things up here that are definitely worthy of attention. The first is the 90 degree gas block. The standard one, as you can see on my GF3, is an angled gas block. So 103 has basically a 90 degree gas block. The GF3 has a 45 degree gas block. That 45 degree gas block is basically what the AK-47 was originally designed with and it works okay, but when you get to really high round counts, it starts contributing to um, gas port erosion. And the AK-100 series rifles, what they did to fix that, and it was actually started with the AK-74, what they did to fix that gas port erosion problem, and also, um, well, in the 74, it wasn't originally uh, the gas port that they were worried about. It was the fact that that 45 degree angle was actually taking chunks um, off of the bullet as it would travel down the pipe. Uh, you had a, a bullet shearing problem originally with the AK-74, and the way they fixed it was with a 90 degree gas block, which had the advantage of uh, decreasing gas port erosion. So it was easier on the bullets and it's also easier on the gas port and so this greatly enhances the overall life of the gun. Um, your gas port pressures are going to be much more consistent over the life of the gun. Uh, it's going to last much longer. Uh, all the way around it's just a good thing uh, to have on an AK type gun. Um, definitely extends the life and like I said it uh, also makes the shooting experience much more consistent as well. Uh, the way that it normally happens, especially with the 45 degree ones, is that after you start shooting a lot, that port will open up, and the more open that port is, the more gas comes back at you, and the more recoil you experience. Technically, mechanically, physically, scientifically, there's only so much recoil that a gun can give, but the felt recoil is going to be proportional to basically how much uh, gas is coming back at you. Um, and a 90 degree gas block makes that much more consistent. Um, so it doesn't feel like it's getting super, super, super hard until you get way, 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 way down the line. And by then, it's been so long and so gradual in increments that you're not really going to notice it. So that is a good thing. And then the next thing I wanted to talk about is the barrel. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it very well. But this is an FN barrel. Uh, Palmetto State Armory is pretty proud about the fact that they have FN barrels. These are cold hammer forged and they are chrome lined. Chrome lined barrels last a long time, especially in AK pattern guns. My GF3, this one right here, has a good barrel on it. I've been able to shoot some really good groups, uh, sub two inches at 100 yards. Some of them under one and a half inches at 200, not 200, at 100 yards. Uh, under two inches at 100 yards is pretty reasonable with good ammo. And then I can oftentimes get it under one and a half inches if I really, really, really uh, do my part with it. So it's a good barrel, it's definitely accurate, but it's not chrome lined. And because of that, the overall barrel life is not gonna be super long. Uh, you're probably looking at somewhere around 10,000 to 15,000 rounds total. Uh, for that particular barrel with the kind of ammunition that I normally use, which is normally the cheap stuff. Um, and by that point, it's probably going to get shot out to the point where it's not going for a, I'm not going to be able to go for a one and a half to two inch group anymore at 100 yards. Instead, it's probably going to be more like a three or four. And if I'm shooting really bad ammo and I've really run it out, it might be even closer to a five inch group at 100 yards. Um, which would be sad. Um, so the barrel life on that is okay for what it is, but the nice thing about these FN barrels, because they're chrome lined, the barrel life is considerably longer. Uh, chrome lined barrels in 7.62 by 39 AKs tend to make for a very, very long lasting gun in terms of round counts. Um, minimally, you're looking at 20,000 rounds for the life of the barrel, absolute uh, minimum, and that's assuming that you're basically doing bag dumps fairly often, you're choosing the worst possible ammunition all the time, which would probably be pretty close to what I would do, you know, that bimetal jacketed stuff that we all like to shoot out of our AKs, that kind of thing. Um, really hard on the barrel, uh, you might see as little as 20,000 rounds, but most of the time, 
at least in terms of good peak accuracy. Whatever accuracy I'm able to get out of this, I haven't shot it yet, so I don't know what kind of groups it shoots. Uh, but it will probably be able to maintain that, or at least pretty close to that, for about 20,000 rounds, even shooting the cheap stuff. Um, going beyond that, though, a lot of people with chrome line barrels on their AKs have been able to get really high round counts. There was a report I read not too long ago of someone who was ex-military who got an AK because they were were kind of impressed with it during their military uh, use. Not that they used it in the military, but they went up against it while they were in the military and like, wow, that's that's a pretty interesting weapon system. And so they got one for themselves just because they liked how it performed. And they put 35,000 rounds through it and the group size did open up, like I said, at about the 20,000 round mark for chrome line barrels. You can see the group size open up. It opened up by like one and a half MOA, if I remember correctly. So. That, that's a pretty good opening on that, but it was still functioning, and it would still hold a a decent uh, enough group to actually be functional. It was still under five five MOA, um, which, if you're you know doing long range precision shooting, is pretty useless. But if you're talking about a CQB type gun, five MOA is perfectly adequate. Um, a lot of uh, pistol caliber submachine guns, for example, will shoot 5 MOA out of the box brand new. Um, 5 MOA for close quarters is perfectly sufficient, and he got his round count clear up to 35,000 rounds, and it was still a 5 MOA or under gun. And so, still perfectly functional, at close quarters at least, um, still working, still operating, just fine. There is another report that is referenced on the Nine Hole Reviews YouTube channel. That's what it's called, called Nine Hole Reviews. A lot of you guys have probably seen it if you're watching this video. And they were talking about the true AK-103. Well, they didn't have a true AK-103, but the closest you could get in America, basically. Uh, they were talking about the AK-103 as it was originally intended, we'll say. And... Uh, they wound up talking about a test that was done that exceeded uh, 50,000 rounds, or at least got to 50,000 rounds, and the gun was still shooting functionally. And the group size, even though it was bigger than when it had ended, it was still enough to be functional within 100 yards for man-sized targets, or even out to 200 uh, plus yards, as long as you're dealing with a relatively stationary target that you could really hone in on. Because, um, like I said, I don't think that the group size exceeded 5 MOA, which is big, but if you're going with a man-sized target, well, you, you can still hit a man-sized target out to 200 yards with a 5 MOA gun, or even out to 300 yards, as long as he's, you know, facing towards you and it's a full-size man you're talking about. As long as he holds still long enough and he's facing you broadside, we're good to go. Um, so very functional at even very high round counts. That is the advantage of chrome line barrels. Like I said, minimally about 20,000 rounds, probably more than that as long as you're willing to take the hit in accuracy. So probably functionally at least double what the lifespan of the GF3 barrel is. Like I said, the GF3 barrel is a very accurate barrel. Like I said, I can get sub two inch groups at 100 yards with this thing. It's not bad at all. In fact, it is better than uh, an AR-15 that I owned a while back in terms of group size, at least depending on ammo. Um, this one, I don't know what group size it's going to have to start off with. Chrome line barrels usually are not quite as accurate just because the chrome lining process tends to be detrimental to accuracy. Uh, being an FN barrel, though, they usually have a pretty good balance between the chrome lining attributes and the accuracy attributes, so it'll probably be okay. But what I'm looking forward to is it being able to hold whatever accuracy it starts with for much longer, probably at least double. Like I said, probably 20,000 rounds before I'm going to see any significant problems. Whereas the GF3, you'll start seeing issues probably somewhere around the 10,000 round mark. So by comparison, much longer lasting barrel. And then the last feature, and certainly not the least feature, is the muzzle brake. Uh, these muzzle brakes are indeed patterned after the 100 series muzzle brakes. Uh, I don't think this is exactly the same as them, but it is close enough that it will perform the same way. All of the reviews that I've seen would bear that out. Like I said, I haven't had the chance to shoot it yet, so I don't know. 
but uh, there are people out there whose reviews, at least in that regard, I would trust. Um, there are people on YouTube, for example, that seem to get cherry-picked guns, because uh, this one is definitely not cherry-picked. Like I said, it doesn't really function correctly. It locks back when it's not supposed to. Uh, or locks back. It stays locked back when it's not supposed to. The fact that it locks back isn't unusual for AKMs. But once you turn it horizontal, it should come forward on its own. This one, though, I have to tap forward. shouldn't have to do that. So this one is definitely not a cherry-picked gun. There's a lot of some people on YouTube that seem to get cherry-picked guns. Uh, but in terms of function, the one thing that usually is consistent, even with a cherry-picked gun, is the performance of the muzzle device. Either the muzzle device is going to perform as it's supposed to, or it's not. And that doesn't matter if the gun is cherry-picked or not, really. And every review that I've seen uh, on the Palmetto State Armory AK-103 would suggest that this muzzle brake does exactly what it's supposed to do, and that is significantly tame the recoil of these guns. AKs are kind of famous or maybe infamous for having very bad recoil attributes. Personally, I think that this is to a very certain extent, a very large extent, overplayed, uh, but it's not exactly not a thing. Uh, there is a reason why even the Russians and their developments eventually got to the point where they developed brakes like this. Like I said, I don't think this is the exact brake that they use on the 100 series rifles, but it's very close to it. And the reason why they went that way is because the recoil issues were real issues. A uh, part of the fact is that most of these are made with a drop stock like this one here, and so your your barrel line versus where it's meeting you don't really match up. And that's another reason why I like the Zukov stocks because they're a little bit more in line. Uh, but that tends to make the gun want to rise. And then another problem is these normal stocks have a very small surface area, which means there's a certain amount of pain that's going to happen if you have a small surface of area. And so you're going to kind of react to that at the same time that it's wanting to rise on you, and it's not a good combination that way. So their solution was to come up with these uh, muzzle brakes that, to, that basically mitigate that effect. Uh, they keep the muzzle down, and they also keep the gun from coming backwards with too much energy. It's still going to come back at you, but not nearly as much as a bear, uh, barrel or even one of the little slant brakes do. Uh, I think that, honestly, is one of the biggest downsides to a lot of the Paul Middle State Armory uh, line. Their AKs usually come with the little slant, slant brakes, and while they're better than a bare muzzle, I will say that much, um, sometimes it's only marginally better, especially depending on what stock you have. If you have a Zukov stock with one of those slant brakes, uh, it's going to make the Zukov stock come up and keep slapping you in the, in the cheek every time you use it because it's basically overcompensating. It's overdriving the, uh, the gun. Uh, these brakes, on the other hand, tend to work by a little bit different principle, and so they don't override uh, the gun. Instead, they kind of more so try to pull the gun forward, which is a little bit better way than trying to shove the gun down. So I like th uh, that about them. Uh, like I said, I haven't shot this particular one yet, but I have no reason to doubt that this brake is going to uh, perform as these brakes were designed uh, to perform. I don't have any good reason to doubt that whatsoever. So what is this? It's not a 103. But what it is is something that looks like a 103 that has a few key upgrades that really are worth getting excited about. 90 degree grass block will prevent bullet shearing and prevents uh, undue uh, gas port erosion. That is a good upgrade. A chrome lined hammer forged barrel from FN significant um, in significant uh, advantage in terms of the longevity of the barrel. Probably at least double the lifespan of the barrel with a chrome lined barrel like this. And then certainly last but not least, a good muzzle brake. All right, so those are my initial impressions of the Palmetto State Armory AK-103. It is it's an AKM, it's not a 103, it's an AKM with some key upgrades and some of the old Palmetto State Armory problems are still intact and going to need to be addressed. And the furniture, while looking the part, is not overly functional, so that will probably wind up changing for me. All right, that's it. Thank you all very much for your time and attention. For those of you who are in Christ, go with God and be blessed. 
For those of you who are not, I pray that you would come to know the true Christ of history, the only Savior of mankind. Amen.